Hey all, it's Andrew Couch here. And in this Tidy Tuesday video, we're gonna be going over convolutional neural networks. So convolutional neural, ne neural networks are very uh, popular among computer vision. And I think it's kind of the next um, step when you're learning about neural networks and you're trying to transition away from your traditional densely connected layers. So a, a convolutional neural network really is composed off of a um, a convolutional layer and a pooling layer. So the convolutional layer is essentially this sliding window that's only seeing like a, a patch of images or a patch of pixels, um, especially in the image context. So this is a convolutional layer. It's basically trying to figure out and apply some filters to extract some type of features. So with images and especially the data that we're gonna be working on, uh, the convolutional layer will try to like detect edges in the number or the handwritten digit. And we don't actually have to specify how it extracts um, the edges and features from the image. Instead, we use neural networks to define and create its own function. So the next layer that's um, a, a part of a convolutional neural, neural network is a pooling layer. And the pooling layer essentially extracts and summarizes the results from a convolutional uh, layer. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, after that, we basically flatten the layer because um, when you take these convolutional um, systems, it converts this data into a uh, dimensional object and we wanna flatten it so we can actually have an, a general output for the neural network to activate on. So when you, you basically just uh, uh, summarize and reshape the results from our convolutional and max pooling layers. And then we just add your standard densely connected layers. Um, there's, there's some more images that I thought were interesting that can kind of explain the convolutional um, neural network. This one I think is a, a pretty good summary of what it's doing. Um, this is just a two, um, there's two convolutional layers with uh, two pooling layers, a densely connected layer, and then the output. Pretty straightforward. Um, right here, I think kind of shows, I'm sorry, this image isn't very, um, um, high quality, but it shows the general idea where it has this, um, convolutional part, uh, and then it shows the, um, uh, summarizations of it and also the outputs of the actual feature engineering from it. Uh, let's see here. And here's an actual visualization of the convolutional neural networks outputs or activations. And you can see when it's looking at this digit, it's kind of looking at like the straight lines, the edges of the number, and then trying to use those as inputs for our final model to predict the, the uh, number class. So let's actually put this into, um, per, in, into an actual R script. So I'm gonna go to R Studio, uh, load up an R Markdown file. I'm gonna call this tidy Tuesday. Uh, I'll just say conf, okay. Um, I'm also recording this on Sunday, I will be doing some more pre-recorded videos um, th today because I will, I'm actually in the middle of a move, so I won't have time to make um, some of these Tidy Tuesday videos. So um, probably at the end of November, I'll um, be able to make more videos um, specifically based off your guys' feedback, but for the next few weeks, uh, I'm gonna have some pre-recorded um, content. So I'm gonna load in the Tidyverse and then uh, Keras which is the neural network framework that we like to use, or as I like to use. Okay, so with Keras, um, they actually have the data sets already inside the package, so we can just download it ourselves. So I'm just gonna call this the MNIST uh, data frame, and then I'll call in the data set MNIST. Okay, and in this MNIST data frame is actually like a, uh, an object with other data frames, we have our input um, images, um, our input labels, and then we can also do it for the uh, test sets. So, so df uh, test um, images um, and then test uh, labels. Okay, so I'm just gonna rename this to like train images, uh, train uh, labels, and I'm gonna, uh, convert these to categorical because if we actually call in um, the labels 
it's just um essentially like factors but when we do it in two categorical it'll transform it transform it to essentially a one hot encoded vector um so we'll just do that cool i'm gonna do that for the test images and then the test labels it's too categorical Oh, uh, DM text. Oh, test. There we go. Cool. So if we look at our actual train images, we can see that it's essentially the actual, uh, it's like a matrix representation of the actual image. Um, so we're gonna have to do some conversions. If we do a, I think a summary, um, we can see our max is 255, our min is zero. And that's what, uh, that's how like images, specifically pixel data is is uh, shown. If we do, uh, if we look at the dimensions, there we have 60,000 images that are in a 28 by 28 matrix. So we need to do some conversions. So let's actually convert these images to essentially just a generic um, a vector. So we can just say like array, reshape um, our images, and then the dim dimensions, which will be the um, amount of images, and then the actual um, rows and columns. So that way it'll be more of a flattened um, uh, um, uh, data set. Also, what before I do that, I'm gonna also uh, normalize the uh, the uh, the data, so I'm gonna do some min max normalization. So let's first do the um, so let's actually just normalize it using min max normalization. So train images divided by 255 test images uh, divided by 255, and then we can reshape our images so that they're essentially. Um, not in a, in a square format or a matrix format, but into your generic um, tabular format. If we look at our train images, we can see we have it in a, like a, a tabular format, especially if we do like our dimensions. So we have it like that. Cool. So now let's actually define our model. So we'll just say um, standard image model. We'll say Keras model sequential and then in our standard image model we're going to define a dense layer um, we'll say 512 units our input shape will be this amount of columns or features in our um, train image and our activation will be a ReLU function i uh, will do that again units equals 512 activation is a ReLU. And we'll just do that one more time. And then for our, our final output, our units will be 10 because we have um, 10. Uh, oops, let me just do a. Because uh, we, we have 10 classes that we want to predict, aka 0 through 9. Oh, test, uh, test labels we have uh that are from zero through nine so we need 10 um, outputs or 10 nodes to do, to act as the class that we're trying to predict for the probabilities and since we're doing a multi-class classification we want to use a softmax function okay so with our standard image model we also want to uh compile it and our optimizer will be atom our loss will be uh, categorical cross entropy. Oops, I still I don't need that. So categorical cross entropy, and then our metrics will be accuracy. Uh, categorical cross loss, categorical cross entropy, metrics is optimal. Oh, I spelled optimizer wrong. Okay. So we have our generic 
um, you know, dense layer model, right? Three layers. Um, so we're actually going to fit it. So we'll just say fit our X will be our train images. Our Y will be train labels. Our epics or epochs will be 50. Our batch size will be 128 and we'll do a validation split of 80, 20%. And we'll also enable callbacks where we'll say callbacks, um, early stopping and our patients will be, um, five. So we're going to train this model. This is essentially the hello world for neural networks. So it's not too big of a deal. Uh, and we should get pretty high accuracy. So we're going to let that go. And then we'll start working on our actual, um, convolutional neural network and compare it to your standard dense layer model to a convolutional neural network. Cool. So we have that trained. Um, we're not going to evaluate it yet. Instead, we're going to start building our convolutional neural network. So with our original, um, data set, um, if we look at our dimensions for this, we have essentially the image, the raw image. And for our other, um, imp our other train image, we have it um, converted and with convolutional neural networks, we actually want to preserve the image structure because, um, the, the actual convolutional layer is going to go through the actual image. So if we go back here, it's going to go through the image. And since we converted this to a, um, 784 column, um, 784 column, um, uh, structure, a convolutional neural network wouldn't work on this converted um, image data set or, this, or, or on the train image object. Instead, we actually have to um, uh, use the original structure, but we have to do some pre-processing pre to it. So let's do that. Uh, our C train images, C train images. And with this um, actual um, convolutional training image, uh, we want to specify essentially the third dimension and our third dimension is, is, uh, is, uh, for images would be like a uh, color. So instead of just height and width, uh, with the pixel value, we also need to specify the color. And in this case, we know it's a one dimensional, um, pixel value because it's only just, it's only just black and white. So we're just going to do that reshape and we'll say, um, and this right here. And it'll still be this, but the dimension will still be 28 by 28, but we also need to specify that it's one. Cool. And if we look at our train images, we can see that it's essentially just added, uh, it's saying that this is an image and not just a, a box or a matrix. And we'll do that for the, uh, we'll do the same thing for the test um, images. Okay. And we'll say test. Cool. So if we look at our test images, we only just added one more dimension. And in this case, it's just a one. And this is important because our convolutional neural network actually wants to look at a, um, a, like a three dimensional input and to convert a two dimensional input, AKA a matrix, we just have to add one more, um, uh, dimension, which is just a one. So now let's actually make our uh, convolutional neural network. So let's call this, um, conf, uh, image model, uh, Keras model, uh, sequential. And let's start adding in our layers. So our first layer that we want to add is a convolutional layer. In this case, we have multiple convolutional layers that we can use a one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional, and then we also have transpose options. Um, we also have these things, but I'm not going to go over that because that gets, um, a little um, more advanced. However, when you're dealing with image data, we generally want to do a two dimensional convolutional neural, um, layer. So, um, now we can actually apply, um, some, uh, some other parameters and the main parameters are filters. Who's filters. So, um, and generally with filters, it needs to be, um, like 32, 64, 16, and then our kernel size. And this kernel size is like the window 
right? So it's like the, uh, what is it? It's like this thing right here. Or the little box, the sliding window that we're going to be using. Um, generally, if you want to increase the kernel size, it'll have more data. Um, it could be more general. Um, in this case, we're just going to do a kernel size of three by three. Uh, and then we'll, our input shape, uh, our input shape will be, we already know our input shape is essentially 28 by 28 by one. And then our activation will be a ReLU activation. After that, we want to add a max pooling layer. So layer max pooling, and we'll say 2D. And generally with the pool size will be like a two by two. So we'll just say two by two. And then let's add another uh, convolutional um, layer. Um, in this case, we don't need our input shape. And let's add another pooling layer. Okay, so now we have our two convolutional layers with pooling. Um, let's now flatten the results. So we'll just say layer flatten. And then we'll add a final dense layer, units equal, let's just say 128. Our activation will be a ReLU function. And then finally, we'll add the same thing, which will be the final output, which will be 10 units with an activation of a uh, soft max. Okay. And with our convolutional image model, We'll actually use the same um, compiling. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. Great. And let's actually fit it. And I'm going to actually copy this again. Because we're essentially using the same um, parameters, but we just have to switch the images. So C train images. And now it's actually training. And we can see it's having similar accuracy for each uh, epoch. And we'll do some final evaluations to see how um, each model performs on the same test data set. It is also worth noting that they were also trained on essentially the same uh, uh, images. So uh, let's see how they actually um, perform out of sample. And I'll actually just type it out. So evaluate, we'll say, uh, was it standard image model? And we'll say train uh, test images and then test um, labels. And then for other one, we'll just say our, our convolutional image model with our C test images. Okay, so the models uh, finished training. It only took about 17 epochs compared to um, the standard image model, which actually took less. Um, e bucks, but let's actually evaluate our models. Okay. And what do we see here? Our standard image model has a validation accuracy of 96% and our convolutional neural network has a validation accuracy of 97%. So there's a, there's basically an increase of 1% in our, um, actual, um, model performance. And it's in the upper end because we already have a model that is over 95% accurate. So an increase in 1% in accuracy is very good for a model. And you can see why, because convolutional image models just intuitively make more sense for how it should be able to process and look at images. Because it's essentially how we look at images and identify what numbers are, right? We kind of scan the, the shape of the number and then we make our own inferences instead of having it as this one single line of just white and black uh, pixel values. Okay, so we're actually going to do um, another um, lesson on this. Oops, we're actually going to do another one. Um, and this is going to be basically on the um, how, how to use convolutional neural, neural networks with text data, specifically uh, with um, the IMD, IMDB data set. So let's actually do that. Okay, so I'm going to load in the IMD, IMDB data set or the movie data set. And it, it's this, it's included with Keras, but we're actually going to specify some parameters. For example, our max length, uh, we're going to say our max length will be, uh, I don't know, 500. And then our 
uh, was it our uh, uh, num words will be 10,000, right? 10, 10,000. And these are just um, movie reviews. And we're saying that oh, no, we're just going to have um, at most 500 words for each review. And out of those words, the words have to be um, from the top 10 most 10,000 most frequent words. So if it's not in, uh, if, if one of the words is not the top 10,000 most frequent words, it'll just kind of omit them as a zero. Okay, so well, I am DBDF. And first I'm gonna train up your generic NLP um, neural network, and then we'll actually go on uh, how a convolutional neural network works with text data and why people use it. Um, we actually look at our IMDB DF. Oh, oops. Uh, um, we have our training set, which is um, X, um, which is based on our reviews. And you can see how in our reviews, um, each little list has a list of um, values. And these are essentially indexes for our words. And if we look at our Y, we can see it's one zero one zero, which are positive and negative reviews. Um, if we actually do a, a map and say, I think length, we can see that um, these reviews don't have the same length. Some have torn 18 words, some have 43 words, etc. In this case, we're just keeping at most, at most 500 words. So it shouldn't have uh, um, any, uh, any, uh, uh, reviews with more than 500 words inside of it. So let's first make our, um, our train data or our train text, which will be our IMDB, uh, train X. And then we'll do our test text, which will be our IMDB DF test X. And then I'll be our train, uh, uh, we'll say train, uh, sentiments because we already have our train labels. So IMDB train Y and then say test sentiments, IMDB DF test Y. I spelled sentiments wrong for the train. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this in and we'll have that. Okay. So with our actual um, models that we're gonna be using, we actually kind of have to tokenize it already. We need to tokenize this text because although we have our indexes, we need to actually convert this uh, into something that our model would want to actually input. We also have to see that uh, these um, ind indices are not in between zero and one, uh, which is very bad for neural networks. So let's actually tokenize it. Um, in this case, we're actually not gonna like convert this back into this words. We're just gonna keep these ind indices um, or dictionary indices and just use these as like a pseudo word and just kind of, uh, tokenize, uh, these little indexes itself. Um, I know that's, that's kind of confusing, but it should be pretty simple, um, with Keras's, uh, text tokenization, um, helper functions. So we're actually going to define a tokenizer. So mo model, uh, tokenizer. And if we type in text tokenizer, uh, Keras has it. And we're just going to specify our num words, which would be 10,000. Okay. And now we're actually going to create our, convert our train text or text data to a one hot encoded vector. Um, this is pretty much like your generic, um, bag of words trick. We could definitely do some tokenization of like doing like n-grams, but since the IMDB data set, I don't think really allows us to do n-grams. One hot encoding will do just fine. We'd also do frequency if we really want to, but. I think we should do the simplest NLP model, um, right now. So let's do a one hot, um, train text. And what we can do is sequence to matrix because these, um, these, uh, train text, uh, data, this text data that it's outputting are essentially sentences or reviews in a sequence, right? There's a different, different links, et cetera. So we have to do a, tr a sequence to matrix or convert this into an actual matrix. And we can specify the type of actual, um, encoding that we want. Okay. So if we do our model tokenizer, then we can give it our train text, and then we can give it an option. In this case, we're going to do binary. 
You can also do like TF IDF, you can do uh, frequency, uh, you can do anything. Uh, or you can do a lot of different way, different options. Let's see if we can pop it up. So we do binary, count, TF IDF, and frequency. In this case, we're doing binary. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing with the uh, uh, test text. So we're just gonna do this, copy and paste it. And then we'll just enter in our test text. Okay, and if we look at our one hot train text and just do a dim, should be 10,000 by uh, the total reviews, which is 25,000 reviews. Uh, we'll do that for our, our test too, just to do a sanity check, which is a, again, the same thing, I believe. Yes, <laughs> yes, okay. Yep, okay. So now let's actually create our text model. So just say, um, Text model, uh, Keras model sequential. And in our text model, we're just going to do your generic um, dense layers. So layer dense units is equal to 512. We're essentially going to replicate um, the same uh, image model just because we have a ton of features. So we can, we're willing to be able to do 512. We actually do like 1024 if you wanted to, but let's just do 512 and keep it. Um, relatively thin our input shape will be our end call one hot train text our activation will be a relu function do the same thing 512 input uh and our activation will be a relu do that again and finally, since we're doing, um, which is we only have one class, we actually can just do one. So units equal one and instead of doing, and then we can do our activation is a sigmoid activation because essentially we're doing like a logistic regression. Uh, we're not doing soft max. We're doing sigmoid. Uh, object is text model layer activation. Uh, one input shape and one train. It's layer compose layer dance activation thousand. Huh, what's going on here? Uh, Relu, Relu units. Ten, one, two, three. Hmm. Let's see here. If I look at our text model. Oh, that's why. There you go. Sorry about that. Um, okay, now let's actually compile our model. So we'll say compile, uh, pile, and then we'll say optimizer is equal to atom, our loss. Instead of categorical cross entropy, we'll do binary cross entropy because it just is a binary um, classification. And then our metrics will be accuracy. A loss binary optimizer, optimize. I spelled optimizer wrong again. Okay. So now it's actually fits our model. So text model fits um, one hot train text. Uh, and then we'll say our, we'll give it our train sentiment. Oops. And then we'll give it, uh, was it our epoch, which will be say 50. Um, our batch size, which will be, let's just say one. And we'll just do uh, 60. 64, a validation split, which will be a 80-20 split. And then our callbacks, which will be callbacks, uh, early stopping with our patients is equal to five. Okay, so now let's actually go over 
the convolutional neural network using uh, uh, text data. And it's essentially the same thing, except instead of using a two-dimensional convolutional um, layer, we're actually going to use a one-dimensional convolutional layer. So instead of just taking a input, a three-dimensional input, right, and creating a three dimensions, we're just doing a two-dimensional input. And what this essentially will do will it'll allow us to look at segments or uh, chunks of words. Okay, and that'll be useful because with a binary um, or with a one high encoded model, the um, the structure of the actual um, text doesn't matter. It assumes that this uh, data or the, the, the words don't have any order and that has no effect in the actual outcomes. In reality, when we're actually reading, you can't read things um, um, uh, forward and backwards. They won't make the, uh, the same amount of sense. And essentially a convolutional neural network will be doing um, some type of like n-gram or sequential process. So let's see what that actually looks like. So with their actual train text, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pad the sequences. So we're actually gonna use this sequential data. So we'll say pad sequences. Um, and for our sequences, our max length will be 500 because um, we know that uh, we already have, we're only keeping um, at most reviews with 500 words, but some um, reviews do not have 500 words. So we're basically gonna fill it up with zero. So if we say like a map length, Oops. If we do the map uh, length, it's 218, etc. But if we pad it, we can just convert all these links to 500 by just giving it some zeros. Okay, so we're going to do that and we'll call this C train text. And then we'll do the same thing for the other uh, uh, input reviews data. So train or test text. And if we look at our dimensions, should be all of them will now be 500. Um, there'll be 500 um, words for each review. Cool. And that's basically it. So now we can actually create a, uh, a convolutional neural network on it. So let's create our C uh, text model, which would be a Keras model. Uh, sequential, right? And what we're going to have to do is create the uh, inputs. So when we're using a convolutional layer on these actual padded sequences, what we need to do is actually create some embeddings from it. So what we're going to say is layer embedding. And with our layer embedding, we actually want to have the input dimensions. In this case, we know our input dimension will be 10,000 because the amount of the vocab or the total words that we have or total unique words we have is 10,000. We're saying like, okay, we have a vector that's 10,000 words and we know though the amount of words that we can have for each sample is 500 because we pad the sequences. Our input length will be 500. And then what we're trying to do is output these dimensions into um, a specific number. In this case, I'm going to say, let's just summarize it to 32 uh, um, nodes. So that is essentially the pre-processing for our sequential or sentence level data. Now what we can do is we can add a convolutional layer. We cannot use a two-dimensional layer, but we can use a one-dimensional layer. And what we can do is if we previously re uh, go back to our um, convolutional 2D, we can kind of use the same inputs. So for our filters, we still will use uh, 32, but since we have a different dimension, our kernel size cannot be two dimensional. Instead, it's just gonna be one dimensional, which we'll just use as three. And then our activation will be a ReLU activation. Cool. Now let's actually look at the pooling layer. Um, again, it's the same thing. Um, instead of doing a two-dimensional pooling layer, we'll do a one-dimensional pooling layer. So let's just do that. So uh, layer 
max pooling, one dimensional. Um, as you can see, we're using a two by two pooling layer, but since this is one dimensional, we'll just do two. Cool. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna do a, uh, I'm gonna flatten the layer. I don't feel like doing uh, multiple convolutions. Instead, uh, what's good about convolutional layer um, neural networks for NLP is that we can use less of them and try to make a more simpler model. We're just gonna flatten it, and then we'll just do a layer dense. And in this case, we'll just say uh, units is equal to 128. Our activation will be a ReLU activation. And then we'll do our output layer, which will be one. Activation is a sigmoid activation. Cool. So you can see this model seems a little more complicated, but we're actually using like less layers. We're just using an embedding layer, convolutional layer with pooling, and then one um, dense layer. Okay, so now let's do our C text model, uh, compile it, give it the same loss. In this case, I'm just gonna copy and paste this guy in. We'll just do that, boom. And now it's actually fits this uh, one dimensional convolutional neural network to our data. In this case, what we call it C train X, and then we'll say our train sentiment. Uh, what do we use for our batch size? Our epics batch size are these. So 50 epochs, uh, batch size of 64, validation split of 0.8, callbacks with early stopping. Okay, and now let's fit it. Now I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna grab our models, our text models, and just try to do some evaluations. So evaluate a text model, a test text, a test, what do I call it? One hot test text, and then our test sentiment. And then we'll also evaluate our a C or convolutional text model. And we'll give it our C test text, C test text, and then our test sentiment. And let's see what it's doing. Okay. As you can see, we used only eight uh, epics or epochs, and then our text model, our original text model, only used six epics or epochs. And now we can see our accuracy. Um, our original one hot encoded model. Uh, has an accuracy of 84 and then our um, convolutional neural network model has a accuracy score of 85 so again we have another increase of about one percent as you can see convolutional neural networks generally kind of have um, a, a slight increase in performance because intuitively they make they add a little bit more complexity to it but um, they try to also more resemble a real world process of looking and classifying data so uh, I know this is pretty, uh, uh, this, this video had a lot of information, but I think convolutional neural networks are really cool. And I definitely want to do um, more videos on it. Specifically, I want to do a video maybe on how to extract um, the activations of uh, convolutional neural networks so we can see what the actual, our models are looking at. So we kind of validate it, but I'm sure I'll do that for a future video. So in the meantime, I'll see you, I'll see you guys next week and tidy on.